This is chapter 5.5 of my beloved Daddy series. The Daddy series so far has five chapters and the 0.5 type of chapters are like the in-between stuff. Mm. Essentially, they're extensions to the previous chapter. So if you haven't seen any Daddy videos, uh, my the link is down in the description to the first video included in the playlist so just click the link and then it plays everything in a playlist and one more thing here's the regular intro hello my darlings my name is Suitopi and today I'm delivering as per usual another Bakugo fan fictions because those get the most views um, I hope you enjoy it and please remember to watch it until the end like or dislike and if you're new here and think I'm worth it, please remember to subscribe. And if you're new here again, click the link down below so you can watch the entire playlist. All right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed just as much as I enjoyed writing it. Let's go. After watching Bakugo leave you behind, you walk the opposite direction towards the exit of your way. Waiting at the school's gate for Nomu to be done with whatever he was still doing in the infirmary. You yawned as you watched him approach. Uh, what did you do? You asked with slight disinterest. Nomu plays trackers. Order by young master. You blinked in disbelief. Uh, Excuse me? Nomo was ordered place devices where Nomo spends time. Trying to contain your emotions, you pulled out your phone and called Bakugo. Hey, sorry, I should have accompanied you to the gate. I just got a little... Emotional? You interrupted. Yeah, I'm really sorry it's happened, but... There is something more important and delicate you need to know. Uh, all right. You aren't a dude, right? No, I'm not. No one plays listening devices. Bakugo went quiet. I'm going to assume you're speechless. Uh, well, apparently my brother ordered him behind my back, so... Uh, yeah, that's all you need to know, I guess. You looked up at your monster. Uh, Nomo, tell him where you planted them. You gave Nomo your phone, hearing Bakugo scream unintelligibly on the other side. The creature, seemingly ignoring his tirade, just said, Under pink alien girl bed, on the carpet, where sat inside jacket of blonde friend. Your boyfriend went quiet, when suddenly a very audible SERIOUSLY erupted from the phone. No more said truth, ordered by Lady. After another five minutes of Bakugo trying to discuss the matter with your monster, you simply ordered him to give you your phone back. My, I can't believe this shit, said Bakugo after confirming it was you. As if that little stunt at the gym wasn't bad enough. You furrowed your brows. I... I'm sorry, you said. Oh no. I'm really, really trying here. I know I get too emotional, but... Let's just get rid of these fucking bugs first. Once again, you went quiet. Look, I greatly appreciate you calling me immediately. I'll get to it. With Kaminari and Kirishima... Uh, might even involve my friend Zero, just to get the situation dealt with before the teachers notice anything. God fucking damn it! What was this thing thinking? That was surprisingly reasonable of him. <sighs> Thank you, you said. I love you. You added helplessly, but he just hung up. Slowly, your head turned towards your monster. Why? Was all you said. Let the order same weight as young master's orders. Angrily, you slapped the creature. 
You are my Nomo. Mine. Only mine. You shouted angrily. Just because he loses his Nomo at the first opportunity like a goddamn infant doesn't mean you have to take orders from him. The monster looked at you dumbfounded. We do not understand. No more. Follow Lady Princess Young Master Prince. This was a game, and you could tell that. Turning your demeanor on a dime, you softly said, No more? The creature blinked in acknowledgement. I order you to inform me of any orders my good-for-nothing brother gives you and has given you from here on out, okay? Nomo nodded. You sighed, turned to leave. After you arrived home, thanks to a quick teleport from your uncle, he gently placed a hand on your shoulder. Toga is all right. You did not kill her. He said in a surprisingly somber tone. I... Okay. You looked away from him, unable to hold against his piercing eyes. I wish to talk to you about this, madame. So I'll stay for a while. Your heart sunk. This really wasn't a good day, was it? The three of you went into the kitchen. Allow me to pour us a drink. He sat and opened the fridge. And he was surprised. Uh, madame, what is this peculiar box? Your insides turned. You had almost forgotten it. Uh... The walking shadow gently took the box and placed it on the kitchen table. No address. No sign. How did this get here? You furrowed your brows. Daddy said you brought it here. Korugiri blinked. I certainly did not. I would remember that. Then he looked up at you, clearly more baffled than you were. Wait, your father? You nodded. How? You scratched over your shoulder. He called me. I don't really remember what he said. Something about... My quirk. A lot of things happened today. I, I'm i sorry. This is really concerning, madame. Korugiri scratched his chin. If you don't mind, I need to make a few calls. You shrugged. I don't actually... You said awkwardly. Very well, then. Then he took out his phone and stepped outside the kitchen. With a terrible feeling in your gut, you look to your normal. The monster was standing motionless next to the sink, just staring at you. Did he want something? Your eyes went back to the box. A feeling of overwhelming curiosity coming to you. You really shouldn't. No more? You said quietly. Can I? Can you give me a knife? The monster obliged, and with a shaking hand you cut open the tape, keeping the box closed. With a heavily beating heart you opened it, and felt a slight bit of disappointment. Inside was a simple leather pouch. You bit your lower lip as you pulled it from the box. It wasn't too heavy. The anxiety from all this made your eyes fill with tears, but your curiosity got the better of you. You opened the pouch, spilling out its contents on the table. It were ten glass syringes. Nine were filled with a green glowing liquid, like something from a glow stick. And one was entirely black. The needled tips were protected by a plastic shell that could be pulled off. You gulped down some bile that tried to escape your throat. No, 
normal? You asked as the overwhelming anxiety took hold of your heart. Afraid of what you wanted to do. It was as if an inner voice beckoned you. Do you think I uh, should? The monster stepped closer. The liquids. He had seen them before. But his memory was fuzzy at best. The monster simply could not comprehend what he was seeing. If he did, if he understood, maybe he could have stopped what was going to happen next. With a shaking hand, you took the black liquid-filled needle before standing up, feeling breathless and quickly huddling into the entrance hall. Kurugiri wasn't there, probably outside doing his calls. This... this was okay, right? You were doing this for your father. He would never harm you, would he? He asked you to do this, right? Once you understood the true meaning of your quirk, that were his words, right? Maybe... maybe this would disable it. You could live a normal life. You closed your eyes and pulled off the plastic cap. Taking the needle into your right hand and held out your left arm. Then you pierced your skin, pressing the black substance into your body. The immediate pain was immense. It was as if you had injected hot lava into your bloodstream. Your body convulsed and you dropped your knees. Voices. You could hear voices. Screams. The seething pain was now filling your entire being. Your vision blurred, turning the world around you into a dark brown mush. The screams becoming louder. The nausea became worse. The pain in your guts became worse. It felt as if your body was melting from the inside. You screamed in pain, desperation to make the screaming stop. Make it stop. Soon your screams were replaced by pained gurgles as your stomach contents spilled from your mouth. The droning screams painfully ringing in your ears when a loud cracking broke through the everlasting assault on your ears. Your bones, your bones were breaking, rearranging, elongating and breaking again. Your arms could no longer support your weight and you fell forward onto the ground. Your body convulsing even more violently lashing out against unseen beings. Your screams of pure agony alerted Kurohiri. He dropped his call with his unknown informant, taking a mental note to apologize to them later. Upon returning to the interior, his eyes were fixated on you and the needle. In your struggle, you had kicked it over to the stairs. For now, he ignored your writhing body coldly walking past you, but as he bent down to pick up the syringe, he stopped himself, turning around as if hit by a sudden realization. My lady, he shouted in fear, not wasting time, running he teleported to your side, turning you on your back. Black sludge was pouring out of your mouth and from your eyes, your body felt like rubber in his hands. You could feel your bones move freely inside you. With one hand, he gently caressed over your forehead. He could not pinpoint this feeling he had suddenly gotten. Yes, he was ordered by his master to watch over you, but he could have sworn just a moment ago he had simply decided to let you suffer from your own mistakes. Disgust rushed through his body, just holding you. With your body's current state, 
It felt like he was holding a heavy bag of writhing maggots. But what was most concerning to him was your face. He could see it rearrange into something different. And while he understood that you were in deep agony, he could not help but call it beautiful. Meanwhile, all you could feel was a seething pain whenever his hands attempted to soothe you. Every touch from your uncle was like salt rubbing over a fresh wound. Korogiri smiled, satisfied. Usually Nomos were sedated while being created. This was probably the reason why. Your hand formed a fist slamming it onto the ground, leaving cracked stone and the imprint of your hand behind. And then... Everything went limp. You awoke at some point in the future, not knowing for how long you had slept. Pain surged through your body, but it was manageable. It felt more like sore muscles rather than being doused in acid. You slowly looked around. On a chair sat Korogiri, with your normal crawled up under him. The shadow man was using him to rest his legs. When your uncle noticed your awakening, he stood up and bowed deeply. My lady, I should have warned you. And you didn't reply. Your throat just felt too sore. I apologize for my question, but are you able to walk? You shrugged. Very well, then. Please, allow me to help. Very well, then. Please, allow me to assist. You nodded. Why was he so submissive? You were confused. Gently, he helped you on your feet. And you looked down at yourself. You are wearing your white nightgown. Kurugir must have put it on after you passed out. Your mind thankfully blocked out the pain you had felt. But you could still hear the faint screams, as if they were still in your head. But the distraction from not being in pain and being able to see quieted down the voices. Kurugiri helped you into the bathroom. For a moment, your heart stopped beating. The person he was holding, that wasn't you. At least, they didn't look like you. They had their mouths slightly agape in shock. Their hands moved when you moved yours. But that was impossible. I understand how it must feel, my lady, said the shadow next to you. She let go of him and took a single step closer to the mirror. And so did the stranger on the other side. She was beautiful, you had to admit. Her skin was pale, no wrinkles, no oversized pores, no blackheads, no freckles. A skin so perfect it was almost scary. Her teeth were as white as snow, slightly sharp. Your mouth quivered, and so did hers. Her eyes, her eyes looked so clear. The left eye was blue, the right one yellow. The color was so radiant in the bathroom's light, it almost appeared as if they were glowing. But the most striking and beautiful feature of this woman was her hair. It was as white as paper, long enough to reach down to her butt. It looked perfectly kempt, smooth and silky. You reached out of your right hand to touch it, 
and you noticed your right arm was completely black, with yellow glowing veins running across it. Just like her. This... this was unreal. This... this couldn't be. You looked at Korogiri. What happened? This wasn't your voice, right? It, it did sound familiar, but softer, yet slightly hoarse. My lady, he started, it appears to me that you have acquired your quirks, and I have brought forth this new form of yours. How? The shadow shrugged. Your father did not send the package, and at least for now, we are unsure of who called you that day. You blinked. You, you're lying. Tell me the truth. Kurugiri took a step back, once again bowed before you. We currently do not know who sent that box. We do not know whose quirks you have acquired. What these quirks are capable of, and we are also extremely unsure of why your body has reacted in this manner. Usually people turn into normals, but that didn't happen for you. You looked at him in confusion. Why do you suddenly act like that? He shook his head. Why do you suddenly act like this? He shook his head. I... I simply feel unable to act different around you, my lady. I cannot control it. You looked back at the mirror. Well, you would certainly enjoy now looking like this. How were you meant to explain it? To anyone, really. Then again, you haven't really come to terms with this yourself. <laughs>